Hi, I'm Mike. They say if it has tires, eventually it's going to cause you grief. And today on the project list, we tackle tire troubles on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back to our Wyoming life. Please subscribe and join us as together we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. This right here is the project list, a continuing effort to stay in front of all the things that need done around here. Some jobs are big, some are small, but all need done at some point. If you're ever here and you're looking for something to do, head to the list because there's always a project waiting for you. Today on the project list, we're taking a look at tires. Now I went around and I counted this morning. All told on the ranch, we have over 80 tires that are in use at least once per year. Whether they're on manure spreaders, haying equipment, or four wheelers, all those tires have to be maintained at some point or another. Some tires are more important, like tires on the gator or the skid steer, which get used constantly. And some aren't high on the priority list, like the tires on the International Tractor, which is only used around the gardens. But when a tire is flat, well, then that piece of equipment is out of commission until it's fixed. And if Murphy's Law stays constant, which it always does around here, you're going to need it within minutes of finding a flat tire. It's those pieces of machinery that we're going to be working on today. The gator has a slow leak that's quickly becoming a pain to deal with. The skid steer is rolled off a tire right off the rim. And the International has been down and out for months, sitting on three flat tires. And we need to get it up and running so that we can clean off the gardens and get it put away for winter. There's no better time than the present to get going. So let's get started. We're going to start today with our skid steer, a Bobcat S630. Gilbert purchased this before he passed away as an upgrade from our old previous smaller Bobcat, a 743. The old one couldn't even lift a ton of feed and this one does the job with a rated lift capacity of 2,000 pounds and 74 horsepower. Of course, with a busted tire, it's not doing anything around here. Our plan with this guy today is to get this tire off and take it to town. Being a heavy lifter on the ranch, I want to make sure it's fixed right. And if the rim is bent or the bead is leaking because of it, I want to make sure that I have it at a shop that can fix it. So we're going to take it into our local tire shop for repair. That also frees up my time to hopefully get all these other tires done today and behind us. This machine weighs about 10,000 pounds. It's about twice the weight of a full-size SUV. So some lifting is going to be needed to get it off the ground. Call it overkill, but we're going to use a 20 ton bottle jack to get this thing up where we need it to get the tire off. With it being so low to the ground, getting it where we need it is going to be a two stage process. We're going to jack it up as far as we can, then support the weight with a six ton jack stand. After repositioning the jack and getting the machine a little bit farther off the ground, then we can take the off the lug bolts. With a DeWalt half-inch impact driver, we make quick work of the nuts and get the tire off. Then it's off to town and Bighorn Tire, our local Michelin dealer. Now, we like to work with local businesses as much as possible and Bighorn Tire has been serving our community for over 50 years. And because of that, we know the owners, the employees and the management. For us, that makes all the difference. With the tire dropped off, then it's back out to the ranch for more tire tribulation. Next up on the list is the Gator. Now this tire has had a slow leak for weeks, but it's getting worse. Rather than continue to put air in it every morning, let's nip it in the bud now and hopefully fix it for good. Gator tires are a lot like four-wheeler tires, although they are just a little bit bigger. Gator tires and four-wheeler tires can usually be repaired using a plug kit, which we can hopefully use today. The first step after getting the tire off is a bit of detective work, and that is finding the leak. All it takes is a pinhole, and after we inflate the tire just a little bit, we can use a mixture of water and soap to help find the leak. On a side note, I really like these pump-up bottles. I discovered them a few years ago, and for things like this, they're much better than spray bottles. Using air pressure, they can deliver a constant stream of whatever it is that you're spraying, although you do have to pump them up occasionally. Here's a hint. 
Always check the valve stem first for leaks. I've spent hours looking for a leak just to find that it was the valve stem. Save yourself a little bit of time. Check that first, then move on to the tire. Plug kits don't work well on sidewalls of tires, so we check there too. If you have a hole in the sidewall, you can try patching it, but more than likely you'll end up putting a tube in to fix it. Also check the bead for leaks, the area where the tire meets the rim. If a rim gets bent, it may be just leaking from there. Of course, none of these issues are our culprit today. And after checking through the tread for a while with our soapy mixture, the leak is found, a very small pinhole caused by a cactus thorn probably that hit the tire just right. A telltale sign of a small leak is little small bubbles that will froth up and continue to grow, maybe even pop depending on the size of the hole. Now that we found the leak, first of all, make sure you don't lose it, mark it or set it up at the very top of the tire so you can find it again and get your plug kit. Mine is from Safety Seal. A friend of mine runs a tire shop up in Montana and suggested it to me. I've always had good luck with it. He even taught me a trick that I'm gonna share with you here in just a minute. The kit includes the plugs, a reamer to make your hole just a little bit bigger for the plug, and the plug installation tool along with some special lube to make everything a little easier to do. First off, we're gonna use the reamer to make the hole just a little bit bigger. Kinda seems counterproductive, doesn't it? I thought so too, but it makes sense. We need to make the hole big enough for the plug to fit into. The reamer is pushed into the existing hole and pops right through. Use a little lube if it's too hard to push and twist it around a bit. Now we've got a leak. Grab one of the plugs, which are rolled rubber that's very sticky and put it into the installation tool. Add more lube and push that into the hole you just made. It's gonna be a tight fit. But once you get it in there, push down on the plunger and pop the tool off the plug. We now have a plugged hole, but we aren't quite done yet. This is where we go off the instructions and follow my friend Chad's advice. The instructions call for you to cut off the tails with a razor blade, but we're gonna go caveman style and burn it. After all, fire is good, right? With this little flame, we melt the rubber around the plug and hopefully create a more solid attachment between the tire and the plug. Once it burns down a little bit, the tire goes out and it's safe to put the tire back on and get the gator out of the shop and back to work. Last but not least is the International Tractor Model 606. Now this tractor was originally manufactured in 1966 and sold for only $4,900. It carries with it a 3.6 liter six cylinder gas engine that works great for airing around the garden at about 50 horsepower. Mostly it's used for tilling, but it has been known to work a brush beater at times. The tires are pretty rough on this thing and a decision is gonna have to be made on whether or not it's worth spending thousands to put new tires on it. But for now, my goal is to get it standing on its own and run it into the shop where we can decide what needs done. Let's start with the flat front tire. Now these are standard truck tires. Once we get it off, we can take it into the shop. There's no searching for leaks on this one. The valve stem is completely broken off, so we're gonna put a new tube in it for now. First things first, we need to break the bead. Now I don't have a bead breaker to do this, so we're gonna do it old school with a duckbill hammer. Working our way around, we break the bead free on each side of the tire. Then come in the tire spoons to get the tire off the rest of the way. And in comes Lincoln to help. Slowly but surely, we work our way around the tire, working the tire spoons over each other until it's totally off the rim on one side and we can get the old tube out. The new tube goes in, making sure to have the valve stem lined up correctly and held in place. Then using the same spoons, we work our way back around the tire, prying the tire back into place. Then we add air, using pressure from the tube to reseat the bead. We head back to the tractor and reinstall the tire. Then it's time to try to get the back tires to hold air. I really like the screw on tire chucks and by using one of these and a clamp on the trigger, each tire on each side is filled up until we're ready to go. I'm actually amazed that they're holding air. Then it's time to fire this thing up 
and get it to the shop. As you can see, these back tires are pretty weather checked and they're wore out. I really, I don't expect them to hold air for long, but by having it in the shop, we can decide if it's worthwhile to spend the $800 per tire to replace them. We can tube them or we can just keep airing them up. Time will tell. Off to town again, and it's time to pick up the skid sear tire and get that put back on. They didn't find a leak in it and they ended up tubing it anyway, but it should work. And with that done, my tire torment for the day is over. Only 68 more tires to check. Thanks for coming along with me today. With all that done, we do have some decisions to make, but we also have a few more pieces of equipment back up and running, ready to get to work, which I'm sure isn't that far away. If you're interested in checking out any of the products used in today's video, head down to the description. Honestly, nothing here is sponsored. This is all stuff that I use and I'm happy to share it with you. Now, I promised you guys a winner of this hat, the summer hat that we didn't blow up. And I'd like to do that now. So can I get a drum roll? Any, come on, just a little one. All right, that's better. The winner of this Stetson hat is John Bowling from Evansville, Indiana. Thanks, John. And everybody else, don't be discouraged because we have a lot more great giveaways coming up. John, I'll be in touch. I'll get you your hat. But that's it for me for today. A little birdie told me that we're having breakfast for dinner tonight and I have my fingers crossed for some of Aaron's pancakes. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and like. And until I see you again, thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.